If you've been watching the series Colonial House, as I have certainly been, you've seen that one of the forms of big entertainment for the colonists was dancing. Not your prom variety or wedding style of dance or anything you would see on a music video, but rather traditional social dancing of colonial time. In a life that was filled with toil and hardship, dancing was one of the few ways the colonists had some fun. So we wanted to know more about it and sought out Gail Griffith, who is a local traditional dance caller, to talk a bit about the history of dancing in colonial times. Gail, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. Well, it, it's really evident from this series, and I'm sure from, from the things that you know, that dancing was the center of social life of colonial times. Mm -hmm. why, was, why was that the case, do you think? Well, um, so many of the popular recre recreations of these times, TV, um, sports events um, all depend on electricity and a large population and there was neither at the time so people were very far apart you know there might be three or four houses in a, a mile two miles um, people only had their own houses they didn't have big places to congregate mm -hmm. or a way to get there quite often and so the small dance in your own kitchen would be the average kind of form of recreation for people. And, and it was really a thing, too, where, where people participated. I mean, they didn't sit back and watch someone else do it. No. They got involved and, and danced. And also, it really evolved around the music, right? Yeah, the music. Um, the colonists brought their, their own traditions from whichever country they started in. Um, England, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, all of them had their own forms of traditional music and dance that were reasonably closely related. Um, they had similar structure. Um, it's very easy for a person to go from one vernacular to the other in dancing. Um, so these were the, the music and the dance traditions that they brought with them from mm -hmm. Europe. And at, as I was reading a bit about dance at this time, I guess it, w it was really popular also that there were there were books and, and periodicals that were printed that would have what the new dances were, and that the yes. colonists just waited to be able to get a hold of these new ones to know what the new dances were. Yeah, they tended to learn their dances from the dancing dancing masters who would go around from village to village or if it was in a big city they would set up their own dancing studio and teach the dances that way because um, they didn't have someone at each dance who knew all the dances and would teach them but the people there would do the dances that they knew. And where did the people did their dancing in the kitchen? But there, there were also special occasions where, where this would Anytime happen. Anytime there was um, a special event um, a church being raised or a barn raising or um, a wedding. a wedding, yes. The birth of a baby. Inauguration of whoever for whatever. Any time there was a good excuse and a big enough hall, people would dance, yes. Because people loved that opportunity to yeah. be with other people, and this was something that mm -hmm. you would do with a lot of, of other people. Well, in, in just a bit, you, you've you gathered a, a group of dancers who represent several different organizations that recreate mm -hmm. his, history and historic dance. Mm -hmm. Um, and and what, are, what are those organizations that those folks um, are with? Some of the dancers are from two of the local uh, regiments of colonial reenactors. They um, do, they set up encampments at uh, colonial reenactments, like there's one in Saratoga, there's one at the Stone Fort in Schoharie, mm -hmm. um, and they teach people about what life was like in colonial times. Um, so people from two of those local groups, and then some people who just very much enjoy doing the dancing of that era are here in costume as well. <laughs> and what is the dance that we are going to see? Um, the dance is called Trench Moor, or Hunting the Fox. It's from, it was first written down, but it was not new, in 1562. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm, I'm very impressed. Should be a pretty good dance. It's been around for a while, huh? Yes. It's stuck around. I, it's a very nice dance. I like it very much. Okay. <laughs> well, Gail, we're going to let you and, and the dancers entertain us with uh, giving us a flavor of what dance was like in, in those times of the colonists. So, okay. Gail Griffith, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having us, and we'll be ha real happy to show you what the dancing was like. Thank you.